a detailed look at diverter valves and hydro blocks in a combi boiler. My name is Alan Hart and in today's video I'm back at Viva Training Academy we've got Roy and Roy's going to show us how a diverter valve works and how hydro blocks work in gas boilers. This is video free today so this is the brass section so this is the one like in a Duotech and a Platinum and a Baxi Eco Blue and it's just going to show us how these diver uh, diverter valve work so you can see them going from hot water to heating explain that to us and also show us on the plate heat exchange as well just to show us the diverter valves also look at the bobbins on here look at the PRVs etc a full explanation of how this works and without further ado let's go over to Roy from Viva Training Academy this video is for gas safe registered and trainee gas engineers under supervision please comply with the current regulations at the time hi guys welcome to uh, viva training academy here over in halifax it's roy fugler again and we're on to part three of our look at hydro blocks today we're going to look at a brass hydro block and um, a lot of manufacturers now are talking about things like building blocks so basically they have a heat exchange and they'll use it in two or three different appliances this hydro block for Baxi stoves will be very, very familiar. It has started way back in the Baxi Duotex, so Duotex, Platinums, Potterton Pro Maxes, Titaniums. It then moved on and evolved to going to things like the Eco Blue Heat, uh, the Eco Blue Advance, um, and things like that. So it has evolved. So we're going to go through it, all the components, how the components have been upgraded, have been changed in the different versions and the different models. So let's start off with the diverter valve. So we've got the diverter valve cartridge. When the Duotech first came out, round about 2004, it had a bypass on the back. So if anybody watched the uh, part one, which was the 105 hydro block, they'll have noticed a bypass on there. So the Duotech originally came out with a bypass pipe. And then a few years afterwards, they developed the cartridge diverter. So this is an original cartridge. It's made out of brass and plastic. And the idea is that the bypass is now through the plate heat exchanger. It incorporates a spring-loaded valve, which allows it to, under pressure, to lift up. The reason for the bypass is there. Modern heating systems have got thermostatic radiator valves on. So as the radiator valves start to close down, the circuit becomes smaller, and obviously, the pressure from that pump because when these came out we didn't have ERP pumps, energy related pumps which can modulate down. So we'll have a look at this diverter valve. Um, the motor head on this one is black. This is an original one before we went on to having the bypasses in there and I'll come back to the diverter motor and why it changed. So again I've got it on a little block, a little box. I'm going to put my glasses on so I can see what I'm doing because age is creeping up on me. So at the moment this one's open to the heating position so water can come down and go around the radiator so it comes down from the main heat exchanger into this chamber and then down around the radiators comes back up and obviously there's no pump on there but there's the pump manifold and then back to the main heat exchanger so mrs miggins has decided to to run a bath so she's turned the tap on so we've got the uh, the hall effect sensor which will come on to there so the little red light would come on the electronics did uh, that detect that there is a hot water demand so then all of a sudden the motor decides to change and it motors back up into the hot water position so as we can see we've closed off the heating port and we've opened up the hot water port so the water now comes down goes into the chamber and it goes through the top of the plate heat exchanger up and down through that plate heat exchanger back into that manifold and back up and goes round so that's basically how that one operates. But when they fetch these boilers out, they got rid of the old black head and they brought out a black and white head. And there's a reason for that. And these heads are very easy to unclip. There's just a little clip, it pops out. And then what we have is a three way plug. We've got three connections in there. The middle ones are neutral and the outer two are both lives because it motors down and motors back up. The new head is exactly the same. 
The only difference is it's black and white. The reason it's black and white, it signifies that this one is to be used with the bypass. The all black one can't be used when it doesn't have um, the bypass pipe. And I'll come back to that in a couple of minutes and explain why. So the reason that this one can't be used with a bypass is that this one isn't spring loaded. So I'm trying to push that pin in and it won't allow me to push it in. So it doesn't allow the bypass to operate. The black and white one, however, even when the pin's at the end in heating position, it's spring loaded and it allows me to push that in. So that's the reason it's, it was changed over. So as a little tip, if you've got one with a black head, you can replace it with a black head. If you've got one with a black and white head, it can be replaced with a black and white head. If you've got one with a black head, you can replace it with a black and white head. But you can't replace a black and white one with a black head because it won't allow the bypass to operate correctly. So that's just a little tip. Something that Baxi did probably three or four years ago now, they changed this cartridge, they replaced the plastic and brass one because what they found was that occasionally the plastic deteriorated. Now, we're gas engineers, we know what we're doing. Baxi did try to help us, but we ignored it. When you bought the new cartridge, the new one looked like that, and some people thought, oh, it's not the same, it's not big enough, but it's a direct replacement. And inside the packet, there was a little addendum sheet which explained things. Now, I know lots of guys that didn't read it because why do I need to read it? I'm a bloke. We do things like that. We buy new televisions, we buy new phones. We never read instructions because we're blokes. So, the sheet explained that if you're going to change the diverter once you drained everything down, because if it was sat in the heating position and when you took off the motor, it always springs back to heating because there's not, no pin to push it down. It's closed off on the heating pot. So if you imagine we've drained the boiler down, but we've now created a vacuum. So if we try and screw that, that seat is closed and it doesn't allow us to un undo it correct uh, easily. So the little addendum sheet said, what we do, we crack the nut underneath on the floor side. That allows air to come in. So when we undo the head, we can take the cartridge out and it doesn't lock. So it doesn't leave half the plastic bits inside it. Now, the easiest way to put the spanner on is a crossways like that. I know some guys think, well, they've got the castellation, so we're going to put it on like that. But you don't get a good grip. I know there's a tool out there that you can buy. I've never used one. I tend to use my good old trusty adjustable spanner. So I'll pop it in there. And yet, this isn't real life. We're in a workshop, so it's not overly tight. It's never going to have water on because it'd leak. It'd be a water feature. So I'm just going to pop that out. So that cartridge comes out. That goes to one side and I can pop the new cartridge in. So when I pop the new cartridge in there, as you can see, it fits perfectly. And I've sealed off to heating open to hot water. So if I just get the black and white head, make sure it's located correctly. Pop it down, because the pin's in heating position, there'll be a little bit of resistance, so I have to push it down. And that now's opened up to the heating port. So again, if I activate it, it's closing on heating, opening on hot water. And then if I move it again, it's closed off the hot water port, but open the heating port. So that's the diverter cartridge, the diverter motor. Again, at the end of the video, we're going to put some part numbers down so you don't have to go looking for them and rooting for them. So that's the diverter valve. The next thing there is a low pressure cutoff. The idea behind the low pressure cutoff, if you watched video two, when we talked about the composite hydro block, Alan's favourite, there was a low pressure cutoff on there. It's to prevent dry fire. It's to stop us firing the boil up without enough pressure in there. So normally if we go below half a bar, that kicks in and, and, and it goes open circuit and would uh, produce an error code. The error code flashes up. That's quite a simple matter. This one again, it's hand tied. It's not right in real life, so I don't need to get any spanners on it. And I can undo that. So I've removed the low pressure cutoff. Under pressure, we would expect continuity across those two. So testing them with a the multimeter. If we've got at least half a bar pressure in the boiler, it should be 
when we go across there with a multimeter on a, on a beep test or continuity test. So that can go down to one side. The next thing is the thermistor. And again, on, uh, on, on part one video where we talked about the 105 hydro block, I mentioned about the washer being changed to a little copper washer. So it's a 13 mil spanner. So the eagle eye will notice that this one's got a red top. The other one had a white top. They're both exactly the same thermistor. Um, it's just different suppliers have different coloured tops. These are 10,000 ohms at 25 degrees and they're NTCs. In the future, we're gonna do a video about thermistors and we'll talk all about that. But anybody that's into the multimeters and the fault finding will understand what I'm talking about with resistance. And this is a standard 10,000 at 25 degrees. So that's the uh, hot water thermistor. And that again is in a wet pocket. The connection there will be for the pressure gauge, but we haven't got that fitted in there. So the next thing that we're gonna look at is the Hall Effect Sensor. Now this one being a Duotech or a Platinum, it's got the clear coloured top because this is a bobbin type. So that's got a little magnet that moves up. So inside there, there's a bobbin. So we can test this one using a magnet or a magnetised screwdriver. If we've got a complaint that there's no hot water or the hot water's not performing correctly, if we just get a little magnet, unclip that off there, pop a magnet in and the little red light will come on. Obviously there's no power to this boiler, there's no wires in it, so it won't do it at the moment. So all it's looking for is magnet, no magnet, magnet, no magnet. So to remove this, I use an 18 mil box spanner. Um, some of you guys will have seen me use this in the past uh, when we did a Potterton Assure video a few weeks ago. And it's 18 mil six sided and it's very, very simplistic. It, it fits on there and it unscrews. And yes, I've slackened things off just to make life easier. You don't want to spend half your video watching me struggling to undo things. So I'm just going to undo that. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to strip it down so you can see what's inside it. So we have a filter in there. That's just a little plastic filter. Now, I'll use that to unscrew. Now, underneath there, there's a connection. That's 11 mil. If you are gonna split one of these, don't put a pair of grips, don't put an adjustable on there, because the brass is so fine, you'll crush it. You want an 11 mil ring spanner on an 11 mil socket. So 18 mil on that end, 11 mil on that, and you can split these down. Now, these have become available as spare parts from Baxi, so you can get both the bobbin type and the one which we'll move on to, the turbine type, which is on the later, Hydro block, which looks like this, the Eco Blue and the new 600 800 range, they have the, uh, the turbine in there. So when we take that out, underneath there we've got a floor restrictor. So it's just a simple little plastic floor restrictor with a little rubber rolling in and as the, the, the water pushes against the uh, inner piece of plastic it pushes the o-ring and it spreads out and reduces the flow. Underneath that, we've got the bobbin. So that's the little bobbin, that's the magnet on top, that's the magnet that moves up and down. And then there's a spring. So one of the things that can happen with these, you can end up when the customer's running a hot tap with a little magnetic, little tinkle. And that's usually that spring's become compressed after a while. So rather than the replace the unit, you can actually take that spring out and just tease it out a little bit. All you're doing is stretching it just to get it about that length. Then once you pop that in, it should sit up probably about a centimetre above the rim. And when you pop the bobbin in, it should support the bobbin. So then when you put the other bit on, the bit with the flow restrictor in there, that just fits in. So that's available. And then, as I said, at the end of the video, we're going to put some part numbers down for these because they are available as spares. The PRV, that's sitting in there, and we've got a two and a half mil Allen screw up underneath. Yeah, it's an awkward position, but I use a little ball end Allen key so I can come in at a slight angle and I can unscrew it. So I'm just gonna slacken that off a little bit, pop that out, and that's just the PRV. Typically these will drip if we've got no pressure in the expansion vessel. So, We've got the drain cock, which has been part and parcel of a lot of Baxi manifolds and hydro blocks for a long, long time. So that drain cock's available. So again, if you watch part one, you'll have noticed that that is a spigot. Now that spigot has evolved. This one's got the two washers on there. There are some with three. I did mention on that part one, how I get it out if it's tight, which is using my trusty adjustable. I use this for most things. And all I'm doing is just coming down on that and then it allows me to turn it and pull it. 
Now obviously this one's not as tight as it could be and it comes out without damaging it. If you start putting grips on there, you're gonna start creating grooves in, in the brass and you can put new washers on and find out that they'll leak. So we're gonna have a makeover. This is gonna turn into an eco blue block. So on an eco blue, we don't have the low pressure cutoff. What the eco blue has is a pressure sensor. So it has a little brass manifold that screws into there. So that little manifold screws in. Obviously I know a washer at the back. And this is a pressure sensor. So this can do two jobs. It can detect when we've got low pressure, it can detect when we've got high pressure. It's very clever. It also detects when there's water flow, so it detects that when the pump's running. And it's just held on with a little clip. That's the clip fits on there. I mentioned about the turbine type. So this is the turbine hall effect sensor. So you can see there's no spring. The bobbin type, as you look in there, there's a little spring, and on that one there's no spring. So that's how you identify them. Again, we've got the filter on there. So that filter will just come off. And it's the same 11 mil spanner on that. So if you want to strip one down, you can do. And again, we've got the flow restrictor and the flow restrictor's colored. This one's a brown one because this is 12 liters. The 10 liters, if off the top of my head, I'm sure it's a pink one. Now underneath there, there is a little fine filter. Because this has got a pivot point, it needs to spin round on. So that little fine filter gets rid of any really tiny bits of bits of dirt in there. So I normally tap them, pop that out. Now, I can't use the reference I used last time because we haven't fed Alan, and if I start mentioning cake, he'll get, he'll get hungry. But if you imagine that that circular magnet is actually two magnets, so it's in quarters, so there's no magnet there, no magnet there, but there's a magnet there and there. And as it spins, it's magnet, no magnet, magnet, no magnet. So that's how it detects when that's, ru when that's running. Now, because that is the turbine one, it doesn't have the clear top. So I'll just put this back together. So I put the filter in, put the flow restrictor in, pop the little filter and I'll just tighten that up loosely. So that just pops into there. Now, don't be tempted or don't try to swap a bobbin type for a turbine type because it just won't work. So this one's now got a red top. So the red top's looking for that magnet, no magnet. So it's not looking for all magnet, no magnet. It's looking for that circulating round. So you can't really put a magnet inside it. What you can do is hold the magnet at the side of it and just waggle it and you'll see the little red light will flicker. That'll tell you you've got power to that. So it's telling you the electronic side of it is probably not the issue. It's more the mechanical side of it. So that's going on there now with the red top. So that's now changed that hydro block virtually into an eco blue hydro block. I know the eco blue doesn't have the same jig, but the hydro block is the same. So the components, things like the cartridge, the motors, the drain points, the PRVs, they're all interchangeable. So that's that hydro block. Uh, the only other thing that's bigger, that's the new one on there. So it hasn't got the haunch on it. So that's the original one, that's the newer one. So it's basically just got a groove which goes into the back of the pump. And that just fits in there. Now normally, when I'm putting O-rings in, it's a nice bit of silicon grease on there, which allows them to slide in. And what I tend to do is just use the palm of my hand to push it, that locates it in there. So that's the part three of the hydro blocks. In the future, we're gonna do part four, part five, part six. The world's our oyster. If you've got any particular hydro blocks you'd like to know how they work, please comment below. We've got one or two which we've took out of old boilers. They're just waiting for me to get the hacksaw out so that we can cut them and you can see inside them. It makes life a bit easier if you can see inside what they do. So we have got one or two in the pipeline. So bear with us for that. If there's any questions you've got, please, please ask. There is absolutely no such thing in my book as a stupid question. As I keep saying, the stupid thing is not asking the questions. So if there's anything at all that you guys want us to do, please ask. We'll try our best to do whatever you want, obviously, uh, within the boundaries of decency. We're not going to stand here, me and Alan, in mankinis and things like that, because 
we get no vid we get no viewers to be totally honest so that's it from viva over in halifax i've been roy fugler thanks very much for watching goodbye till next time thank you once again for that roy and thank you to viva training academy if you've got any questions please put them in the comments below and also if you could if you could put a thumbs up on the video that's really helpful if you would like any more videos like this please add a comment let us know what type of videos would help you and we'll try if possible to accommodate where we can thanks for watching